Okay, so we have a probability question here and seven counters in a bag. He takes at random a counter from the bag and does not replace the counter. So straight away we're talking about conditional probability here, aren't we? Uh, in other words, the probability of something happening depends on something else happening. Okay. Um, he then takes a, a ran, at random a second counter from the bag. Calculate the probability that the number on the second counter is two more than the number on the first counter. Okay. Um, well, there's not very many possibilities here that you can have, really. Um, we've only got the numbers one, two, four, and five. So if the second counter is going to be two more than the first count, obviously the only combination that we can have is a two the first time and a four the second time. No other combination will work. Okay, so the probability of getting a two the first time will be one out of seven because we've only got one two out of seven counters. Okay, the probability of getting a uh, four given given that uh, we got a two the first time okay is going to be uh, well how many fours we've we got we've got four two fours here so it's going to be two out of but now there are only six in the bag because remember that he's, he he will have kept the first counter so it must be two out of six which is the same as one third Okay, so what we're saying now is what's the probability of getting a 2 and then, and then, a 4. So we need to multiply these together. I'm using the word and there, so we need to multiply these together. So I'm going to do 1 seventh times 1 third, which will give, give me 1 over 21. 1 over 21. Okay, it says the number on the second counter is 1 more than the number on the first counter. So, so now we've got to work out that probability. Okay, well for this one um, there are a couple of possibilities. We could have a, a 1 and a 2 followed by a 2, couldn't we? Or we could have, we could have a, a 4 followed by 5. Okay, now, the probability of this happening is going to be, uh, well, it's going to be 1 seventh for the first one to get a 1, because there's only one 1, okay, multiplied by, um, there's only one 2, so that'll be 1, but this time it'll be out of 6, okay, so that'll be 1 out of 42, okay. The probability of getting a 4 followed by a 5 well, there are two fours, so that'll be two out of seven to start with, multiplied by, and then to get a five, well, there's three fives, so that'll be three out of six for the second time. So that's going to be, well, that's uh, one half, isn't it? So it's going to be two times, two times one, which is two, seven times two is four. Uh, 14, 2 over 14, okay, which is 1 over 1 over 7. Okay, so now what we're saying is what's the probability of this, um, of these events happening or these events happening? We can't have them happening at the same time, so uh, we're using the word or here, so I'm going to add these probabilities together. So I'm going to do 100, what, 1 over 42 plus 1 over 7. Uh, well, this I have to multiply both these by 6. I end up, this is, this is, this will turn out to be 6 over 42. So plus another 1 over 42 is 7 over 42. And if I now divide both these by 7, I will get 1 over 6. So the answer is 1 over 6.
1 over 6. And we've got 5 marks for that one. Which I thought was harder than the, uh, the, the previous question we did, which was a 7 mark question. But there we are. Okay. Right. Um, okay. Trigonometry. How do I know? Because we've got right angle triangles and we've got some angles. So it's definitely going to be trigonometry, isn't it? Um, they want me to find... All this here is just detailing what, what's on the diagram. We've then got um, calculate the length BD. This one here. Okay, so we've got to find this. I'm going to call that... I'll just colour it in red and then we'll call that X. Okay, so that's what we're trying to find. Now, um, we've obviously got two right angle triangles here. We've got this one, the small one, and the big one. I'm going to look at the big one first because um, if I can find out, they've both got this side in common here, haven't we? Haven't they? They've got this, this side here in common. If I can find that one uh, using the bigger triangle, yes, then I can use trigonometry again to find out what this one is. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be having to use trigonometry twice for this one. So the first thing is, ignore the little one for the minute, and we're going to just look at the big triangle here. And I'm going to label it up. So this is the angle that we're talking about. So I'm going to go, this is the opposite, and this is the hypotenuse. I'm not interested in the adjacent at the moment. Okay, so I'm just looking at that one. I realise that that is so sine. So I write that in my triangle. And we're trying to find O. And this is telling me that if I'm trying to find O, I'm doing the sine of the angle multiplied by uh, the hypotenuse. Okay, so I'm going to do the sine of 32 degrees multiplied by 47. Okay. And this is going to give me CB. This is going to give me the, the side CB. Here. Okay, I've just done that on my calculator and I've got 24.906 and so it goes on. Now, I'm going to keep that in my calculator. I'm not going to, because I, this is a, I, I haven't finished. There's still a lot to do on this. So I'm going to leave that in my calculator without rounding it. Now, if we look at the uh, second triangle now. Okay, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, just rub out the labelling that I did for the first one. Okay. So we're just looking at the little triangle now. I'm going to call this one, this one the opposite now. Here. And I'm going to call this one the adjacent A. Okay. And we know now that this angle, this side here, is 24.9. Oh, 06 okay etc etc now for the small triangle then we can now say that we're looking at o and a which is tangent tangent so i do my little triangle and it's toa t o a and this is telling me that if i'm trying to find a i'm going to do the opposite divided by the tangent okay so i'm going to do the opposite, which is the 24.906, etc., divided by the tangent of 51 degrees this time. And this is going to give me the side that I'm after, which is X, or actually let's call it what they've called it, which is BD. BD. Okay. So I kept that in I kept this in my calculator and divided by the tangent of 51 and I came up with 20.16864748. Okay. Now they want the answer to be three significant figures. So um, right, so I look at the third significant figure, which is the one. Okay, do I need to round? Yes I do, because this is a six, so that goes up. So my answer is going to be 20.2. Fabulous. Okay, next video.